So tomorrow, October 6th, Invicta 3, big card coming our way. A lot of fights to cover. Let's go ahead and start with fight number seven, Julia Budd and Danielle West. Oh man, Julia Budd, she's looking good recently, you know, especially the last fight against Nielsen from Sweden. You know, the takedowns. Yeah. We all know she's a good stand-up game. Takedowns, the ground and pound. It's pretty vicious, you know. Um, I think she's coming to her own as an MMA fighter. Yeah. The thing is, though, in this fight, she's actually fighting Danielle West as opposed to her original opponent, which was Elena Maxwell. And I would think that you're kind of, when you're fighting Elena Maxwell, you're expecting somebody with really heavy hands to come at you. You know, I mean, Elena's got a good ground game, but I, I, I'm pretty sure Bud was expecting it to be a striking game and transitioning to the ground. Now she's fighting Danielle West. Danielle West has a very good jiu-jitsu game. You know, she's faced some of the top people in the world, including Rin Nakai, who she brought to a split draw. And uh, Rin, uh, Rin's a pretty good 145er, and to go the distance with her, and actually, I think she won the fight, Danielle West. So to actually, you know, go that far with Nakai, is gonna be, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how Bud handles this switching opponent. Yeah, because, you know, West, from, you know, from what I've seen and understand about it, you know, she's fought everywhere, you know. She won't be shaking to be in the States. You know, she's from the States, but England, fighting Russia, she's been everywhere. So I think that she'll come in this fight composed, and uh, I'm, I'm ready for this one. Yeah, and her nickname's the Honey Badger, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> the Jewel and the Honey Badger. Yeah. Awesome. Let's move on. Okay. Ooh, I like this one. Okay, so Michelle the Karate Hottie versus Lacey Shuckman. Now, obviously, I've got a relationship with Michelle Watterson. We've been friends for about five years now. So it's, it's hard for me to be, you know, a little bit... I, I don't want to say that I'm biased in this fight, but I will say that my tendency is to think that Michelle is, is going to take this one. However, this is the first time that Lacey uh, is going to drop down to 105 to Adam Lee. And that's... Uh, I saw her the other day, and she is ripped. She is huge looking strong. I think she's going to make the weight no problem, but um, I'm just I'm curious to see how... Michelle actually handles this, uh, this power at her. Well, uh, Michelle, we all know she got skills. Yeah. I've seen her at the gym before. She has skills. Shuckman is tough. Heart of a lion. And, you know, making this, making this weight cut maybe be bigger and stronger. You know, I'm not sure she's going to be faster than Michelle, but sometimes bigger and stronger and having a big heart is enough to overcome a lot of, you know, other variables. It is, it is. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to be sitting there and trying to be as unbiased as possible behind the microphone. But, you know, I, I do know that Michelle can throw submissions out of nowhere. I mean, it's, it's amazing what she's been able to pull off. I mean, she, she taps me all the time in the gym, and I hold about 50 pounds on her. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. <she's happy> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we saw the last fight, Shutman, you know, she fought a girl that's pretty well-versed in submissions. And, you know, she did her best and held on, but yeah. she, got, she eventually got tapped. But, I don't know, maybe this, maybe this you know, her being a little bigger and stronger can you know help her fight off more submissions, you know? I, I think you're right. And I think actually what comes down to in this fight is who gets top position. You know, that's gonna be my opinion on it. Um who who gets top position will probably determine because if Michelle is on top, you know, she she will I think be a little bit smaller than Lacey. So she might, you know, she might be able to kind of get away from the strength and, you know, be able to pull out. But if, if Shuckman gets on top of her, that could be a different story. Because, you know, both girls are well, you know, you're right, it's probably going to who gets on top. Because mm -hmm. both girls are fighting altitude, well conditioned. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm excited for that one too. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, here we go. Speaking of high altitude fighters, we've got Kat Zingano versus Raquel Pennington. And both of these girls are from Colorado. So yeah. both of these girls are going to be able to pull some, uh, some super cardio, I think. You know, the fact that uh, Raquel fought um, Tori Adams and you know, held her, well, you know, did well, held her own with her. I know Tori. I'm not sure. Are you familiar with Tori Adams? Um, I've met her. I've yeah. not fought her. Oh, she, she was a, she was, she was a beast. I knew her from wrestling. And the fact that she didn't go out there and get beat down by her, you know, earned, she earns a lot of respect from me. Her last fight, she, in Invicta too, she defeated a, a girl, I forgot, I forgot her name. But she was Sarah, defeated, Morris. Sarah, Sarah Morris. Sarah Morris, yeah. yeah. Morris, yeah. Morris, 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 Morris. Whatever, yeah. yeah <laughs> defeated her, and that was pretty impressive to me. You know, um, Kat, I know it's Kat Albert, but I guess it's Kat Zingano now. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard a lot of stuff about her. We haven't had a chance to watch her fight, but I know from everybody I'm hearing, she's a real deal. I knew her from wrestling, and she was she, legit wrestling. I have actually had the opportunity to see her fight and to train with her before, and she is a beast. She actually spent some time in Thailand training um, a, a few months ago, and she spent months out there, took some fights in Thailand, traditional Thai fights, and uh, she's going to be bringing definitely a a huge, more developed skill set to the table, um, I think. Now, who 
um, I guess, you know, I don't know, like, just watching Pennington's last fight and, and, and watching Kat's last fight, Kat's opponents have been, you know, super high level as well. Yeah. And uh, Kat also, her husband is also her trainer, Mauricio Zingano, who has a very excellent jiu-jitsu game. Yeah. So I think that she's been able to take that wrestling and transition to a submission game uh, very successfully. She's, she's a good Muay Thai coach in uh, Sac Mongol, yeah, who's a legend. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, man, man, you know, right now from Wade, you have me thinking that it's going to be a mismatch. I'm hoping it's not. <laughs> but, you know, we all know Pennington's tough, but, you know, Zingano you know, might be the, the next She might thing. be. And then there's one thing to, to factor into this, though. She was preparing for a, def a different opponent yeah. and for a fight in Strike Force. She was originally sure. supposed to fight Amanda Nunes. So we have to see how that plays into her mentality. Can you take that aggression that was channeled for, you know, another fighter? And I think for a week previously, <laughs> about that was for, you know, a week previously, yeah, yeah. And, and bring it to the table. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that change of opponent can It just, can mess with your yeah. head, yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, this one, this one's gonna be, for me, this is a personal favorite. Uh, Tara La Rosa and Vanessa Porto are fighting at 125 pounds. This, uh, Tara La Rosa has been, and she's one of the fighters that actually inspired me to become a fighter. Uh, when I watched her fight with the Hook and Shoot uh, Revolution DVD in 2001, I saw that and I was like, I wanna be a fighter. She's amazing. She's amazing, not just because of her skill set, but because she has not quit in all the things, all the amazing things that have happened for other female fighters in the sport, and yet somehow it's kind of eclipsed her. Yeah. She's got a, a wonderful record, 21 and two, and yet somehow she's never achieved that super, super stardom that other female fighters have done, despite beating high-level opponents constantly. But she's fighting Vanessa Porto, and Vanessa Porto is actually pretty much the Brazilian equivalent of her in that. Never reached super stardom. Yeah. Such a good fighter. Very aggressive pit bull. Mm -hmm. A pit bull, you know. Um, La Rosa, Mav, she's been around for a while. She's been doing big things for a while. I'm hoping that Invicta will give her the platform to where she can get the recognition she deserves. And she's fighting a good person, you know, a good fighter as well in Porto where she looks impressive being Porto. Maybe it's going to catapult her into the limelight. Yeah, and I, I think that they are going to be establishing a flyweight title. And hopefully we'll see, you know, maybe the winner of this bout and the winner of the Hancheck uh, daily bout. You know, maybe that's these are going to be contenders for the 125 female title. But quick question: Wasn't La Rosa used at 135? Yes, La Rosa fought at 135 for the majority of her career. She made a switch to 125, which I think was a healthy switch for her because she's a very, very small 35er. So uh, you know, we'll see how successful that is. I mean, I think she made the switch two or three years ago, but. Because the talent pool at 135 is the one that's always been focused on, I think she remained in that division for probably longer than she should have. I hope that the weight cut isn't too hard on her because you know sometimes you might be small, but that weight cut can still get you. That's absolutely you know, true. So. Yeah, and this will actually be Porto's first time fighting at 125 yeah, in Invicta, yeah. which watching her previous fight against Sarah Delelio, I thought she was a 25er. Yeah, just she was, the size yeah, difference. There's a big her. size difference. Yeah. She fought a monster. Yeah, yeah. she fought a monster, that's right. Sweet. So we are moving on to Barb Honchak and Ashleen the Bash Daily, the little warrior and the bash. Now Barb Honchak last time was incredibly impressive to me. Um, just, I like to call her a sniper. I think she just, she is just cold blooded, goes out there, executes her game plan perfectly, does exactly what she wants to do and controls herself within the fight just beautifully. But Ashleen Daly is one of those fighters who's overcome huge odds. You know, being a, being a female fighter in Ireland can't yeah. be that easy. Um, going all over the world in yeah. training. And actually has a very, very impressive record. Well, you know, with, uh, with Honchek, the fact that she submitted Roxanne Malafari, that's impressive to me. Because Roxanne, she's a tough girl. Yeah. She's a, a vet. She's fight everywhere. You know, you can't, you don't really finish her. You know, you, you can go out there and beat her. But she's hard to finish. You know, she's been finished a few times by big name opponents, but... Just the fact that she submitted uh, Mark Sands impressive to me. Yeah, very you know? impressive. As far as Daly, I know she, she's young, you know, well traveled. We don't know much too much about her. She fought Rossi Sexton, and Rossi's tough, tough little girl. Very yeah. tough, and that went to a decision. I think that was one of those uh, fights of the year kind of candidates. Like I think it was amazing. She also has a victory over Jessica I, who is an extremely good fighter, and I think that's actually Jessica's only loss. Well, you know, the, her victory over. Um, um, Rossi, was it some a hometown decision or was it? Uh, was I, it legit? Yeah, I don't know. I think it was legit. I think, but I think there were a lot of transitions happening on the ground. Uh, you know, a lot of exciting things like one person going to a submission to another person. You know, just back and forth. And I, I think that Ashleen showed a lot of heart in that fight, getting out of a lot of things that you know normally would have would have caught other people. 
Ooh. Oh man, we got the gangster. <laughs> Where's the peacemaker? Oh my goodness. Ain't no it peacemaker. Is. The <laughs> no, rematch. This is the rematch of the year, man. <laughs> Um, God, I mean, I don't even know what to say about this. Caitlin Young versus Leslie Smith. Both of these women are just phenomenal fighters. And, you know, they, they're the people who, when they say don't let, don't let records deceive you, that's exactly what it is. Each of them almost have a 50-50 record, but each of them brings so much talent and so much aggression to, to every fight. It's, this is the one, you know, everybody will be on the edge of their seat for this and This fight. is going to be power first volume. Mm -hmm. We have power in, um, in the gangster, you know, Mrs. Young, very powerful. As a matter of fact, the last fight when she fought um, uh, Carmouche, she was handling Carmouche. Yeah. First round, destroying her. Dest I mean, beat down. Yeah, I was expecting Carmouche to go out on some of those strikes. I, me yeah. too, but Carmouche, is a, she's an animal herself, yeah. you know. And then we got Smith, who I call Baby Diaz. Because <laughs> yeah, no she throws and throws and throws and throws and throws and throws. Her offense... Is pretty much her defense. Mm -hmm. She throws and she fights like a Diaz brother. Yeah, she does, and I mean she trains with with Caesar Gracie team, so you know it, it makes sense. Um, I think that honestly, both of these women from their previous fight with each other have made huge improvements in their game, and I think that I, you know I was speaking with Smith and she said that she's put a real emphasis on strength and conditioning this camp. You know even before she knew she was facing Caitlin Young, yeah. so I think that that's going to bring her power level up, and so maybe some of those heavy volume strikes are actually going to be power strikes as well. And with Young, I don't know, like she has just continued to improve and improve. I know that she fell short against Carmouche, but her, you know, her takedown defense actually improved a lot in that yeah, fight. A lot. And I think that. Uh, I think that she's taken the lesson. She said she's not just training now at the one gym. She's going around to other gyms, improving her game in all areas. And I think, I think we're just going to see version 2.0 of an epic, epic battle. Because that first one was five of the year. Oh yeah, for sure, no doubt. Five of the year. You know, I put it in all sports, even boxing, kickboxing. That was my five of the year right yeah, there. Yeah, I actually you know? completely agree with you. I'm hoping they can outdo it, but you know. If they outdo the first one, then someone's going to die in that cage. You know, yeah. and I don't want that to happen. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anybody to die. <laughs> yeah. But I will say that what's really, really cool about both of these women is their determination to improve is going to be shown. That, I mean, they actually, both of them want to finish so badly in this fight because don't leave it up to the hands of the judges <laughs> or it'll be a draw. Um, but I, I think that both of them are going to try so hard in every single second of this fight to finish. And I'm really pumped for it. As a matter of fact, I might just not even try to score this. Yeah, fight. I'm with you. you know, I might just sit back and watch <laughs> yeah. the thing, let Mara do all the yeah, talking, exactly. and just, just enjoy it, get some popcorn. And like, woo! And yeah. We'll be in the background. We'll be like, go ahead, Mara. Yeah. You do it. You do the work. <laughs> that's awesome. That one, that's going to be an awesome fight. And we are moving on to the Queen of Spades versus the Monster. Sarah, or Sarah, Shayna Baszler versus Sarah the Monster Delalio. What are your thoughts on this one? Man, okay, I'm gonna be frank and I'm gonna be honest out there. Baszler has impressed me 3,000% because I was, I was expecting Sarah McMahon to go out there and just do an and one mixtape MMA <laughs> highlight reel on her, and that did not happen. No. You know, I was like, whoa, this is, it was a very close fight, you know. Is you know is controversial to a sense, uh -huh. but you know what? Both both their stocks went up because it's an entertaining fight. Um, Delelio is a monster. That bunny boxing must be working. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> sign up for that. You know, I, I might start trying to holler at her and get some some lessons <laughs> to get my boxing better. But this is a fight. This, I think right here, this might be my fight of the night. I think that's not a bad assumption to make. Um, Shayna Baszler, you're, like you said, impressive. Like what she just. What she did with her game plan against Sarah McMahon, like she, you know, she sensed that McMahon was overcommitting on her punches and she would just hook out, uh, capture that angle, and just rattle off combinations. I just thought it was wonderful. I, I really was impressed by her in that fight. And Delalio has, um, she's working with Miriam Nakamoto. I, I hope I pronounced that the right way. Um, gosh, if I didn't, I apologize, Miriam. <laughs> but um, she's, a, she's a really, really phenomenal Muay Thai uh, kickboxer and she's one of her training partners. And um, she, uh, is I mean to spar somebody that high level yeah. that's got to improve your striking that's got and that's where I think Delelio actually even though she did very well against Porto I think her striking was the area she could have improved the most in so the fact that she's concentrating on that area a little bit more I think that it's going to be well, I think this one's going to go to the ground and I think it'll be exciting on the ground but I think on our feet we're going to be really impressed and X Factor 
you know, in this fight is Baszler's confidence. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when, when Baszler fought McMahon, she wasn't intimidated at all. You know, most people, me, me, if I was a female and I was wearing some, you know, wearing heels and long hair, I would have been intimidated oh, yeah. by Sarah McMahon because she's a beast. I've seen what yeah. she can do. But Baszler went out there like, you know, like she was not intimidated whatsoever, didn't take a step back, and was out there fighting, you know, and I think that's the X factor she carries, her confidence and her belief in her skills. I think that's absolutely right. And what's awesome about that is also just she's the queen of spades it's the monster these girls are so good at branding themselves yeah. now they're so good at bringing this this higher personality to the cage that we can't help but be fans now like it's, it's like impossible watching, not to I feel love like I'm it i'm watching godzilla versus mecha godzilla yeah exactly awesome okay so the 105 title this is the inaugural adam weight title the the first title that actually is going to happen with invicta fc championships uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this one? Well, my thoughts, first of all, I saw the belt. I'm jealous. I might, <laughs> I might go ahead and, while those girls are fighting, take the belt Take the myself. belt and run away. <laughs> I know. I might fight you for it, actually. I really like that belt. <laughs> Don't head kick me. <laughs> okay, no head kick, no wrestling. <laughs> but no, um, for this fight, um, Panay is so well-rounded. Like She's going to be hard to beat. She has the length, she has the athleticism, aggressive. Comes from a great camp out there at Lake Forest, California, um, with Mark Munoz. Um, the Rain Training Center. Man, she's gonna be tough to beat. You know, her last fight, she's just so dominant. Oh, she looked amazing in her last fight. Yeah, and I mean, we're really talking about number one in the world versus number two in the world. Amazing matchmaking on this one. But, uh, I, you know, Sugiyama, like, has, she's an undefeated record. You know, she's, she's bringing a lot of experience in terms of, of, you know, she fought two times in one night. You know, she's bringing some real grappling, real, um, you know, ground experience to the table. However, they don't let you punch to the face on the ground in, in, in jewels. So it's a great organization and it's a really good way, you know, for these female fighters in Japan to, to get their experience. But with that rule change, that might be a struggle for her, especially with somebody with those vicious elbows like Jessica. Uh, vicious ground the pound. And here's the thing, Sugiyama has a weird, like, you know, a real North Dark style. Mm -hmm. And that could possibly throw Panay off. But my, pro my issue with that is, you know, if you're real solid, the unorthodox stuff will not bother you. So, you know, hopefully Sugiyama can find a way to get in her head, mm -hmm. throw her off, keep her timing, keep her guessing, and uh, maybe, you know, do some damage to keep her number one ranking. Yeah, and you know what? I think that it's her actual, her grittiness and her toughness that is going to be really the thing that could frustrate uh, Penne the most. Because I think, you know, Jessica, she's almost beautiful with the way she transitions from this thing to the next and if she fights somebody who makes it a little bit more ugly and just grits it out and takes a bunch of shots and, and finds her opening you know she she could be in some trouble so what you're saying is this fight can be built as beautiful technique versus grit versus grit i mean i you know i i, I don't want to like say it's it's a nationalistic thing but we know japanese fighters can take a beating and come back at the end we know it i mean we've seen it time and time again so you know, I'm just saying this. This could be. Yeah. This could be a really, really interesting fight. It could be like a real life Rocky moment. Yeah, it could be. It could be like a Misha Tate grabbing the arm bar at the end after almost getting knocked out kind of fight. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm super excited um, for tomorrow night. Like, I don't know what people would do besides watch this fight. There's no other fights on television that, you know. Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, Invicta. Wait, Invicta. Invictafc.com. Yeah. yeah, it's free, stream free. Yeah. You know, hopefully they got a good computer. You know, yeah. get that Mac or yeah. Toshiba's terrible because I have yeah. one. But get that Mac. <laughs> you know, fire yeah. it up and then fire it up. Watch the fights and I mean, like I mean, I think it would be a great date night if if you know some guy took me home to a computer and said, hey, watch this female fight card. I'd be I'd be all about it. I'm just saying. Just make like, sure you know that guy. Can actually fight back. You can get, get some new techniques from that. You might be in some trouble. Like, Let's practice. <laughs> cool. Hey, thanks for doing this with me. I appreciate it. That's no problem. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, this is awesome.